this is my website and it has all the features that a WordPress website has. You can click wherever you want and you can see that it's a full site. But if you look up, you'll see that there is no domain name here. And this website has been installed locally on my computer. What does that mean? Normally, you need to buy a domain and hosting to then create a WordPress site. But if you don't want to launch your site on the internet yet, and you only want to try and test WordPress for free, then you can install WordPress locally like this on your computer. Now you can use the default editor to create your design, but that can be complicated and take time. But what if you could get a really well-designed template here for free and then edit it using drag and drop like this? Also, everything is free. Now, whenever you finish making your website, you'll want to make it live on the internet with a domain name like this so that other people can also visit it. And I'll show you how to fully move your local site to a live site. Of course, you don't want that the first time someone visits your site that it's loading slowly and they leave, right? So at the end of this video, I'll show you a free tool to keep your site super fast with a 90 plus score on Google PageSpeed. Now, there's many different free softwares that you can use to host your WordPress locally on your computer. I'll show you how to do this with Local by Fly because that's the easiest free one to use. So let's come to our browser and enter this website address. Once you're on this site, go here and press download. Then choose your platform. So I'll click and choose Windows. Fill in your information here like this and then click get now. Remember this email and password will be needed later on to access your WordPress site. So please make sure you remember it. Now the software has started downloading and it takes a little bit of time. Once it's done, double click to open it and click here to install it. And once it's done, you can click finish and the software will launch automatically. Now here you can see that there's the option to create a new site. So let's click that. Now this name is only a file name and won't show up anywhere on your website. So you can name it anything like test website. You can then click on advanced and there's some settings here which you can change. But for most people, it's best to leave it at the default settings. So then come down and click continue. If you want to use the preferred one, these are all the settings that it's going to use. If you want to modify them, you can go to custom and select the exact PHP version you'd like to use, the web server and the database as well. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend going with the preferred one. So click right here and press continue on the bottom right. And here you can enter your WordPress username, password, and your WordPress email as well. Then go down and click add site. Now WordPress is being set up and this can take some time. When it's done, then you should see this kind of dashboard. Then you can see our site domain right here, SSL details and more details. So now go to this admin button and click it. It will then open your WordPress login page. We can then go ahead and type in the username and password that we had created before and then press login. And here we are in a WordPress dashboard, exactly the same if you were in a live website. You can go to plugins, add new, install a plugin and do everything else that you would normally do with WordPress. Now, if you go on top, you can see that this is a locally hosted site. I can click here and this is what our site looks like right now before you've added any themes or plugins or content to it. To edit your website, let's go back to your WordPress dashboard. On the left, you'll see a navigation menu with different options. Now, the first thing we want to do is change the appearance of a website by changing its theme. So go to appearance and then themes. You'll see a few themes that are already installed. To add a new theme, click on add new at the top. Now you'll see thousands of free themes to choose from. For now, I'll search for the Astra theme because it's good for beginners. I click install, then activate. So it's live on my site now. If we go back to our tab and refresh it, we can now see that the design has changed. Now it can take a lot of effort to modify this site design into something that we want. So we're going to take a shortcut here. Go back to our dashboard. Now we'll install a free plugin by going to plugins and then add new. And just like themes, there are thousands of plugins here to choose from. Search for Astra starter sites because it will have some pre-made website templates that will save us a lot of time. Click install, then activate. Now click on library to see all the templates that are available. Remember in the intro, I showed how we would edit a site using drag and drop like this. To get that ability, select Elementor on top before you click a design. Elementor is basically a popular page builder that's connected to this plugin. Now I'll choose this design. 
overall I like this. Now you can visit your site and you'll see that your site looks exactly like the template we just saw. There still are many options here. So I'm going to click and open this in a new tab. So we can see what our website looks like. It has all the different pages as you can see here and the features are also there. Now I'm going to show you how to customize your content, pictures and everything else on your website. Go back to the dashboard, go to pages, all pages. These are all the pages that were imported with the template that we had just added. You can also click here to add new pages if you want. From here you can add a title, content and more. Once you're happy with your page, you can click on the publish button to publish your page. Coming back, you can click on any of these to edit them. I'm going to click on edit under home. From here, you can see the Elementor page builder. This is a drag and drop interface that makes it easy to customize your website. For example, if you want to change this text, just click on the text area and now you can change it. Let's say you want to change this button style, click on the style tab and now you have different options to customize it. If you want to change this image, you can click on the dots here, then go to style and change the image here. If you want to add a new section, you can click on the plus icon. From here, you can choose the structure of the section. I'm going to pick this one. From here, you can click on the plus icon to add a widget for a heading, image, button, whatever you want. If you want to move this section, you can just click on the six dots and drag it to wherever you want. Every time you click Save Draft, Publish or Update, WordPress saves that version of your post as a revision. Even if you don't select those options, WordPress still auto-saves a post version every minute that replaces the older auto-save version. To undo a change, either a post revision or an auto-save version can be used and it takes just three steps. On your WordPress dashboard's left menu, hover over Posts and click All Posts. Find the post you'd like to revise, hover over it and click edit. If you're using Gutenberg, once you click revisions, this will lead you to your revisions interface. Here, WordPress automatically compares a version with the one that was created just before it. There is a slider at the top that you can use to switch between versions and check which one you need. You can also tick the box near compare any two versions and select the two versions to compare using the same slider. Once you've decided which version you want, click like to restore this revision or restore this autosave at the top right. This will restore the entire version and you'll be redirected to the editor. If you'd like to just restore a specific section, you can do so by copying that paragraph, returning to the editor and pasting it correctly. As you can see here, this menu is a navigation tool that helps visitors navigate your website. To create a menu like this, go back to your dashboard, go to appearance and then menus, click on create a new menu, Enter a name for your menu and click Create Menu. On the left side, you'll see different items you can add to your menu. You can add pages, posts, custom links and categories. To add an item, simply check the box next to it and click Add to Menu. You can rearrange the order of the items by dragging and dropping them. Once you're happy with your menu, select where you want it to be displayed under the Display location and click Save Menu. And there you have it. You've just added a menu to your website. Now, if you want to change this area, which is the header of your website, or scroll down, and this is the footer of your website. Both the header and footer can be edited by going to the customize option. Now you can see that there are some blue icons and you can click on them to change things. Like if you want to change this logo, just click here and you'll be able to change it. The same way you can edit the footer of your site as well. Okay. Once you're done, click publish and you can make all these changes live on your website. Now the first step is to open the folder that has our website files. Now these are the HTML files we will upload. Make sure your homepage is named as index.html. Now instead of uploading them one by one, select all of them, right click and compress them into a zip folder. Now we will use this folder later on. The next step to publish your site on the internet is to get a hosting plan and domain name. Now, there are many hosting providers and no matter which one you select, don't worry, the steps I show you in this video will work for all of them. Today, I'll use Bluehost, not because it's sponsored or anything, it's just that I found a discount link for it and yes, you can also use it. After clicking this link, we come to this page, click on Get Started button, you'll see a list of plans. For beginners, the basic plan is more than enough. Click Select here. 
Next, you need to choose a domain name, which is your website name like this. From here, you want to fill out all your account information like this. Scrolling down, you want to review the package information. For beginners, I recommend starting with the 12 month package. It's a good balance between cost and commitment. Then scroll down to the package extras, uncheck all the extras, agree to the terms of service and click submit. Finally, enter your payment details. After your purchase, you'll be prompted to create a password for your account. Once you click submit, they'll send you an email to log into your hosting area. Now log into Bluehost and you'll see the option to create a new site or migrate a site. Click on migrate website, click here and then click on file manager. Open the public HTML folder. This is where we will upload our website files. There might be some sample files in this directory, so let's get rid of them first. We need to select all the files and click delete. Good, now we can upload the website files. Click the upload icon and choose file. Select your website file, which is that zip folder. Now the processing icon here shows that uploading is in progress. Once the process is completed, you can now see the file in this folder. Set the destination as the public HTML folder. Now you can see that all of our website files are now extracted. Okay, next we need to install WordPress because that is the best free website editor that will help us customize our website later on. Click on the My Sites tab. Click the Start Building button. Once done, it will take a couple of minutes to install WordPress. Here is the login name and password you want to use to enter WordPress. Make sure you save this to your notes because you will need it later. Then click on the My Sites tab, hover over the site we used earlier and click Manage Sites. On the upper rightmost corner, click Log into WordPress and you'll come here. Now we've reached the WordPress dashboard. From here, you will edit and manage your live website. Now open a new tab, type your domain name and yes, you can see that your site is now live on the internet. Any WordPress website has these essential needs to function properly. I'm going to share the best free options for each requirement now. I'll also add links for all the plugins I talk about below. A website speed plugin is crucial because inevitably your website will slow down over time. Airlift is the best free option because it's not complicated. Open another tab and type Google PageSpeed. Now, here click on PageSpeed Insights. This is a free page by Google to check if your website is loading too slowly and driving away visitors. So now let's go back to our website copy the URL and come back and paste it here. Then click Analyze. Now you can see that this site score is quite low because a decent score looks like this. It's in the 90s and the other numbers are also green, not red. This is normal because as we add more content, plugins and other things, our site slows down. But don't worry, we can just install a free speed plugin to keep our site fast no matter what we add to it. So we will go to another tab and type airlift.net. By the way, yes, that is my face because my team's built this, but don't worry, it is a 100% free plugin and we've built successful plugins before, so you can trust when I say that this is the best free speed increaser in the market. So click sign up, then add your email. Now paste your website URL here and click here. Now download the plugin by clicking here. You can see a zip file has been downloaded. Then go back to your WordPress dashboard, go to plugins, then add new, then drag and drop the folder install the plugin and then activate it. Now your site is automatically being optimized and here you can see a big jump has happened in your site speed. If you go back to page speed insights and then click analyze again, you'll now see an improved score. We need backups because there's many reasons why your website can lose data or get deleted. You might see that your web host offers backups like Bluehost is offering those here, but these are very unreliable. For a free option, Updraft Plus is a solid choice. It's user-friendly and offers scheduled backups, so you don't have to remember to do it manually. However, a backup is only good if, when in trouble, you can use it to restore your site. Updraft Plus backups often only restore partly or sometimes not at all. So there is a risk that if you go with a free option. To get a 100% guarantee that your full site will be restored every time from its backups, you should use our paid plugin Block Vault because it gives unlimited storage and makes multiple copies of your backups to make sure that you always get a full restore. Moving on to security, the most popular ones are iThemes and Sukuri, but both have a lot of flaws. Malcare is the best free option because it offers many premium features for no cost. If you ever get hacked, you can pay to upgrade your plan and you'll get one-click malware removal as well as enhanced security. Next, let's talk about SEO. 
Rank Math's free version is great for beginners. It guides you through the process of optimizing your site for SEO and also has an AI content assistant that gives you real-time suggestions to improve your content's SEO. Once you're ready to pay for more features, try Ahrefs. We use it as well and it's got many powerful features. Then you need a good email plugin for anyone interacting with your site, whether they fill a contact form, try products or whatever else. MailPoet is a great free plugin. It offers drag and drop email builder, automated emails and even analytics. So you can see how your emails are performing. Here's another video I thought you'd like.